in Boca. Chats with Juliano Hazan. Juliano Hazan is Epicurean royalty. He's an award-winning editor, an amazing chef, and offers some of the top cooking classes in the world. His blood runs with culture and food, so let's get into it. Great. <laughs> it works. It does? Wow, I'm impressed. Me too. <laughs> <Myself. laughs> me too. If you only well, saw what was going on behind me, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite funny. Um, how, what's your background? It's beautiful. Okay, I thought... I was hoping you might ask. Uh, yes. it's, <laughs> it's the villa where we do our cooking courses in Italy. Uh, <laughs> now you're just making me jealous. <laughs> well, oh, man, that is beautiful. When you Tell can, about, you should come. I, I'm going to as soon as I can get on a plane. Tell me about this villa. It looks amazing. It's a uh, Renaissance villa outside of Verona in uh, Valpolicella, which is Verona's wine country. Uh-huh. And it's been, uh, we do our courses in collaboration with a wine producer, Maria Elisa Legrini. And so she bought this villa several years ago and has been restoring it and has created gorgeous, luxurious rooms for people to stay in and a great kitchen to do our classes in. And, um, and that's where we do it. We've been doing it for 20 years now. I mean, you're living La Dolce Vita to the ninth degree, my friend. That, <laughs> that is stunning. Share it with people, too. That's fantastic. Well, Giuliano, thank you for jumping on this call with me. I really do appreciate it. I'm dying to talk to you. Um, I've been a big fan for a long time, and I think you got a lot to say about uh, cuisine, and especially Italian cuisine. So uh, if I can, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Well, thank you. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, of course. So tell me, um, you know, obviously we have a, a crazy situation going on in the world right now, especially in Italy. Um, and because you have boots on the ground there, I'd love to know how's it been since this whole pandemic has started? Well, I've been in touch with people there, with people that we work there. And fortunately, you know, everybody's well. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just, uh, waiting and to see what, you know, when things can get back to close to being normal. And it, I think we're still a ways away, unfortunately. Yeah. Do you feel like that things will get back to normal or do you think that there's going to be like some disastrous effect for Italian culture, Italian industry, the tourism industry that happens there? I, I, I think Italians are incredibly resilient so I, I really don't see a, a disastrous, you know, uh, long-term effect. But that's, it's going to take true. some time. And I'm sure that there'll be some changes to, you know, to daily life and what we considered normal before uh, will probably be different now. I agree. I mean, if there's any culture that's lasted the test of time for <laughs> thousands of years through Nero, through the Dark Ages, I can exactly. think that the Italians are pretty good. Um, do you think that has any reason because of the food? <laughs> I think food is central. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the series of books, In Book, uh, In the Mouth, you know, kind of tells it all because it, it food is central to it the Italian way of life and, and living and very important. And uh, so, of course, it, it's going to continue to be so. Sure. And um, do you know these books, the In Boca series? Are you familiar with them? I am. In fact, I, I have four of them. Oh. I have, I have uh, Napoli, Emilia, Romagna, and Val d'Aosta. Interesting. Do you have those specifically for a reason or was it just how you happened to collect them? I, they were in my mother's collection. <laughs> so that's how it started with me too. Okay. Cuts down from the mother to son. <laughs> yes. You know about my mother, right? Of course. Of course. <laughs> She's a superstar. Um, so tell me about these books. How do you find them? Like what's unique about them compared to other cookbooks? Well, I think as you said a little bit in, in your film about them, it's a little bit like, you know, your grandmother telling you how she made things. It's not uh, the normal American uh, current way of writing recipes right. uh, uh, in any way. You know, it says you do this and this and this and that. And then, it, you know, when it's ready, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, so I think it's, you know, it's fun. It's great. I, I enjoy 
reading them and looking, you know, reading those recipes and I, and plus, you know, all the uh, pictures and drawings and, and little sayings and so forth, uh, add a tremendous amount of, uh, color and richness to the books. Yeah. I felt like they more than other cookbooks represented, uh, Italian culture, like what it's like to actually go to Italy and eat a meal there better than other cookbooks because of the pictures, because of the little antidotes, because of yes. the little drawings and poems, you get kind of a sense of the playfulness of the food, the love for culture, the love for family. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. If you have a conversation in Italy with somebody about, you know, something that they ate, I think that is very close to the way that they would describe it. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you, did you get your love of food and, and uh, Epicurean adventures from your mother? Did she teach you how to cook? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, from both my parents. Uh, okay. my, my father's still alive. He's 91 now. Wow. Uh, but my mother did pass away uh, in, uh, in 2013. But I, you know, I l- love to eat because they love to eat. Uh, but somehow I think I had a particular interest in how the food was prepared because I always liked to sit in the kitchen and watch my mother cook when I was little. It was a little stool that I would sit on, and uh, sometimes I would help her. Um, and I really learned from her almost by osmosis. You know, the, the way that she taught me, I think, was very different from the way that she always taught her students. When she taught a class there was never a pause. In other words, she was always explaining something and and telling you something and so forth. And instead, when I was in the kitchen watching her, it was was a lot more silent. It was, you know, watching, absorbing. I might ask a question here and there, or she might tell me something, but not as much. So it was a a very different way of learning. That's interesting that you mentioned it that way. I think uh, in general, you can do that for a lot of different arts. I mean, they say if you want to be a filmmaker, you can go to film school and they can dissect mm-hmm. movies, they right. can show you editing, you can read the Coyote Cinema, all this stuff. But sometimes the best uh, approach is to go to the set and just open your eyes and watch how the sausage is made, basically, you know, to get that Absolutely. understanding. Yeah. yeah. And I think you get a little bit more of an intimate understanding. The things you need to know are apparent to you and the things that you don't know, like you said, you ask the questions when you need to. Um, but that's wonderful that you can grow up in that kind of an environment where your mother's cooking in the kitchen. I always found it fascinating too. Um, my mother also very fluid in the kitchen. There's never a moment of pause. It's like a stream of Uh consciousness, like Jack Kerouac, (laughs) but uh, a cook. And, uh, my father even, you know, who cooks, but not as much as my mother, but, uh, I used to be fascinated by the mocha and him making the coffee, even those mm-hmm. like little things that, that pass down from generation to generation, you know, they're done so many times that there becomes like a ritual to them, a religion almost. So yeah. it's interesting. Um, how did you end up where you are right now? Like, how would you say that you've placed yourself career wise, uh, where you are right now? Well, I, uh, I started out uh, being interested in theater. Once I left college, I went to theater school, did a two-year program of uh, professional theater school, but realized that pretty soon that I wasn't going to be, uh, <laughs> uh, be able to <laughs> earn a living doing that. So uh, you know, my mother started her school in Italy, in Bologna, uh, when I was 17, mm. uh, and I was involved with that from the very beginning uh, in the summers when I wasn't in school, helping out uh, both with the classes and the trips that we did. So I, I started learning a bit about what it's like to, to teach cooking and so forth. And so I decided, oh, let me, let me try that. And I started doing some classes and found that I really enjoyed it tremendously and, and, right. and loved it. And so little by little, it became more and more of what I did until it was everything I did. That's fantastic. It found you in a way, I guess. Yes, which is great. absolutely. Yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, um, as someone that works closely with food and, and knows it very well, uh, and having seen our film, what did you think about two people that aren't chefs cooking? Because there are so many chef shows, and usually they're held they're heralded by amazing chefs. Like, what uh, what was your takeaway with two jabronis, let's just say, from Brooklyn <laughs> cooking a meal? 
Well, first of all, I should tell you that my mother never liked being called a chef. She said she was not a chef. A chef was somebody who managed the restaurant kitchen. She was a cook. And to me, you guys were cooks, uh, you know, in full sense of the word. From, you know, going to look for the, the ingredients and searching the best ingredients that you could for the dishes that you were going to make to coming back to the kitchen and, and preparing them with love and passion and, and then enjoying them afterwards. So maybe the most important part. <laughs> exactly. I think, yeah. uh, I think you, you were not any less than, you know, <laughs> what you might consider a chef. Well, I appreciate day. that. That's high praise coming from you. Really? That's, <laughs> that's, I'm going to use that on my website. If that's okay, I'm going to quote you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And by the um, way, I, I have to tell you that, I loved watching the the cooking part of the film that you did. I, uh, you know, it really made me made my mouth water and made me want to eat it and and cook it. It was it was beautifully done. Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, it's funny because we shot that literally the day before the lockdown, the quarantine in New oh, York. Really? <laughs> yeah, so we felt this impending doom happening, and we're like, uh -huh. we need to have like a last supper. <laughs> like, this yeah, because we eat a lot and we cook a lot, so we're like, let's do a blowout. We'll we have these books we've always wanted to like really go deep into them. So we, you know, modeled this beautiful dinner, and um, you know, just shot it literally with whatever camera I had available on me, and. I'm glad you got the sense of like how into it we were because we were we were deep into it, man. It was crazy. No, it was fabulous. I would love to have you film me cook. <laughs> well, you know, um, that can easily happen because that would well, be a joy for me too. That would be great. Okay, good. Um, tell me something. You're in Italy right now. Why Actually, do you I'm love... Not. You're not... <laughs> Okay. No, I live in Sarasota, Florida. Well, you're in Italy now with the background. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're in Sarasota. Tell me about Sarasota. How do you eat food in Sarasota after, you know, thriving off of Italy? It's it's different. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's little different, bit different. But we, we can still eat very well here. You know? Do you have like a, like a butcher? You have an Italian grocer down there? How does there it is work? an Italian deli uh, that has lots of wonderful Italian, you know, products. Uh, we have some farmer's markets, mm. you know, that, that produce, uh, very good produce. Uh, and we get, you know, some decent meats, uh, some very good fish. So it's, it's not the same as in Italy, but it's different. It's doable. And, and we can certainly make very good food as we have been doing at home for the past eight weeks. <laughs> so... Yeah. I mean, has your f relationship with food changed because of this quarantine? Not at all. I mean, huh. I think that uh, food has always been, you know, a very important part of our lives. And if anything, it maybe, you know, became even more so mm -hmm. during this time. Um, and we really enjoyed, first of all, always being together as a family. I mean, in general, we always do try to uh, eat together, but uh, we have an older daughter who's off in college, uh, but now she's home too. And so it's been great to really eat all our meals together as a family and enjoy them and discuss what we were going to eat and what we were going to make. And so it, it's been great. That's great. I mean, some good things have come out of this, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> so Juliana, let me ask you, why do you love Italy? What is it about Italy that you love so much? What's there not to love? Uh, Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> Italy, you know, has incredible culture, uh, sensitivities, culture, design. When, when we do our course in Italy, we, we take people to visit various food producers. And these are all small producers who have incredible passion and pride for what they do. And I, I don't think these are anomalies. Uh, yes, you know, there's larger industrial uh, uh, production, but in general, I think in, in every facet of life, Italians are very, very much into doing things absolutely the best that they can. And for the, just for the, the sake of doing things well. Right. And it, it, I think in the end, it shows up in gorgeous Italian designs and art, uh, food, and, you know, every facet of life. 
Well, that's very well put. Well, listen, I can't wait for the world to start turning again. Um, I will accept <laughs> your invitation. I would love to come visit you and do a film specifically on you and what you do there because it is oh, that would absolutely be amazing. Yeah, it's it, well, it's <laughs> happening. It's happening. That's all we're saying. Okay, <laughs> this is going to happen. Um, yeah. This has been a real pleasure. Thank you, Juliana. This, I mean, really amazing to talk to. I've, I've really Same wanted here. to do this for a while. Yeah, this is great. Likewise, so, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Stay safe. Eat well, and uh, okay. we'll talk soon. All right. Take care. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. Twenty rare cookbooks, four tasty dishes, two best friends. Watch the film, see the books, help Italy recover. Get hungry at italyinbocca.com.